This is Matthew Cratter from Trady University, and today I want to talk about the Ethereum merge. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing from our perspective? What is the merge? Some believe that the merge is an esoteric dance and mating ritual performed by Ethereans every 200,000 blocks by the light of a full moon. Some insiders have called it the Badger Dance, and we can see a great example of it here where the brave leader Vitalik Buterin is doing the badger dance. In fact, this is not obviously not the merge. The merge is really this situation. You have these two separate blockchains. You have mainnet or Ethereum mainnet. This is a blockchain that's secured by Ethereum miners. It's, it runs on proof of work, similar to Bitcoin. And this is the blockchain where, where everything still lives today, all the transactions and the balances. And then you have this newer chain that has been around since late 2020. I believe it was November of 2020. This is called the Beacon Chain. And this is a new Ethereum blockchain that is secured by proof of stake. And we're going to talk about the differences between proof of stake and proof of work. But this chain, as I understand it, has been basically running empty. Uh, so people can, it's sort of like a test net. And so people can see if, are things going to break. And so the merge is these two chains coming together. These two chains will be combined. And at that point, Ethereum will have transitioned from proof of work to proof of stake. The Ethereum, mi the Ethereum miners will be pushing shopping carts around the city and sleeping in homeless shelters because they won't have a job anymore. And Ethereum will be running on proof of stake. I'll link to the Ethereum Foundation's website uh, where you can read a little bit more about the technical aspects of the merge. For those of you who don't know the difference between proof of stake and proof of work, both of these are blockchain consensus mechanisms that are used to add blocks to the blockchain. They're also ways of letting everyone know the state of the blockchain. In other words, creating a consensus on what the blockchain looks like, what the tr transactions are on it, without the need for some central authority to adjudicate things. Now, proof of stake is always marketed in these really green ESG terms, uses 99.9% .9 less energy than proof of work, reduces carbon emissions basically to zero, more fair, more egalitarian, more social justice. But it's really important to know, especially in the face of the avalanche of propaganda that we're going to see going into the merge, which could happen as early as September of this year, September of 2022. Those have been promised many, many times. They may have to uh, extend the deadline again. But in the face of that, we're going to see a lot of propaganda about how Bitcoin is boiling the oceans, how it is uh, a bad protocol, and how proof of stake and Ethereum moving to it is much more environmentally friendly. So proof of stake is always marketed in green language. But what it really is, is you can think of it as rule by a select series of insider oligarchs. Under proof of stake, and this is not true under proof of work, but under proof of stake, literally the more coins you own, the more control you have over the protocol. And this is great news for all the Ethereum insiders who receive cheap or free ETH at the, 70, at the uh, initial pre-mine, which is approximately 70% of the supply. These people who are beneficiaries who receive these large allocations at the pre-mine can now stake their coins. And because they have more coins, their odds of being chosen to mine the next block or what's called validate the next block under proof of stake, their odds, their probability is much higher than those who have fewer coins. And so in this way, proof of stake really does recreate the current system, ruled by the rich, ruled by insiders, and the rich get richer. This is technically true as well, because the more coins you have staked, under proof of stake, the, the higher the odds that you'll earn even more coins and get even more coins that you can then stake and increase your odds of earning even more coins. So this is the centralizing mechanism of proof of stake. And it's very similar to something like the Federal Reserve, which is a central bank in the US. Instead of having the FOMC uh, committee members, you have this cabal of insiders like Vitalik Buterin and Joe Lubin who have the most coins and control the protocol with their buddies. If you think I'm exaggerating, if you think this is not a protocol that actually has a leader and is being led in a certain direction, you can read this article about the Ethereum merge and you can hear about Vitalik's plan for what's gonna happen next. After the merge, we're gonna have the surge, the verge, the purge, and the splurge. You really can't make this sort of thing up. 
but this is definitely a plan for what is going to happen with Ethereum. It does have a brave leader in the form of Vitalik, who has a bully pulpit and drives development. This doesn't look like a digital commodity to me, and people who pretend that ETH is this neutral uh, digital commodity are ignoring all of these factors. This looks more like a software company where you have a founder who stuck around and is, in contr as, and is controlling things with his friends and leading the development process. You don't have, uh, when you have a commodity like gold, you don't have gold sitting around planning what's going to happen next. And in the same way, uh, Bitcoin is is a digital commodity. It doesn't have it doesn't have a founder who stuck around. It doesn't have a leader with a bully pulpit. Instead, Bitcoin is a complete mess. It's a it's an anarchic mess where it evolves very slowly, but there is no there is no centralized authority, and there's not this cabal of insiders that you have like uh, like you have with uh, Ethereum. Now, does proof of stake actually consume less energy? Yes, it in fact does. It consumes less energy in the same way that storing your cash in a wet paper bag in your backyard uses less, I should say, uses less energy than storing your cash inside your house, which is protected with video cameras and alarms, etc., all of which obviously run on electricity. And so I would, I would argue consuming less energy is not something we should be trying to do. We should be trying to run things efficiently. We don't want uh, washing machines and cars that don't run efficiently, but we do want things that run on energy and especially, especially on electricity. Our goal as a civilization should be to consume more energy rather than less. I personally like dishwashers, washing machines, dryers, computers, electric lights, cars, rocket ships. These are all things that free up human leisure time, they increase productivity, and these are good things. And Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network uses less electricity than uh, the, the machines you use to dry your clothes. And people who don't like Bitcoin, Bitcoin will say, well, that even that's a waste of electricity. But I think Bitcoin is very useful. The energy it consumes, it consumes for a very good reason, which is it provides a neutral decentralized form of money, which other alternatives like Ethereum clearly or not. So I think this is a fake goal to try to consume less energy. The way you consume less energy is you you shut down your cities and you all move and live in live in mud huts and give up your computer and give up your internet, etc. And I don't think this is really the goal. If your goal is to reduce carbon emissions, you should just say so. And in that case, you should be petitioning for more nuclear power plants to be built. You cannot run the grid on just solar and wind. You'll never be able to because it cannot generate a base load that is reliable and constant. You can't have hospital electricity turn off when the wind stops blowing and the, stum the sun stops shining. And there's certain places like Europe, for example, which is not especially sunny and is not especially windy. You need things like natural gas and nuclear power. So if you want fewer carbon emissions, if that's important to you, you should be talking about nuclear energy. But talking about trying to use less electricity, less energy, I think is very, very misleading. In the case of Ethereum, it hides behind, it uses, it uses and it's going to use proof of stake to hide behind this mask of environmental stewardship. Instead, what's really going on is you have insiders who are locking down their control of the, of the protocol. As we said, it recreates the existing fiat system. It gives control to these original insiders who can stake large amounts of coins and continue to get richer from the protocol as a result. The problem with proof of stake, one of the many problems, is it leads to more and more centralization. Ethereum will end up being controlled by, Ethereum under proof of stake, I should say, will end up being controlled by Vitalik and his buddies, and then people like Brian Armstrong who run exchanges where that ETH is being staked. And these large exchanges are gonna have a lot of voting power a lot of staking power because that they will be very large stakers on the protocol. So this is the problem with proof of stake, it leads to more and more centralization. Right now you have something like a third of all Ethereum, I believe, being staked on the Lido protocol, which I'll, I'll link to a video uh, about that. Don't be fooled by Ethereum's moralizing language and this flood of propaganda that we are seeing. The proof of work, the consensus mechanism that Bitcoin runs on is a very special feature of Bitcoin. It's not a bug. It's not something to be ashamed of. In the same way, if you have video cams and alarms 
and lots of uh, electrical barriers guarding your wealth. That's not something to be ashamed of. That's just smart. And that's the way the universe works. There's no free lunch in the universe. And if you ever hear someone claiming that there's a free lunch, they're usually someone like Do Kwan or one of these scammers. Proof of stake, the pr other problem with that is it doesn't cost you anything to build a fake chain because you don't have to burn electricity like you would if you were running a proof of work algorithm like Bitcoin uses. Proof of work, it costs you a fortune in electricity to build a new chain or to rewrite the existing chain. And this creates the security of the chain, makes it much more difficult to rewrite. Proof of stake, as we said, is like storing your wealth in a wet paper bag. Proof of work is storing your wealth in a contraption that uses energy to secure it, which is how the real world works. It's not rainbows and unicorns, as I like to say. You have to actually expend energy in the real, in the real, in the real world, in the real universe, to get anything done. Proof of stake will ine inevitably lead to disaster. And remember when I told you that Celsius was going to be a disaster, when I told you that Terra Luna was going to be a disaster. Ethereum under proof of stake is going to be a disaster as well, not just from the centralizing control, but if there's ever a network partition under proof of stake uh, for Ethereum, there's gonna be no way to tell the difference between the two chains. It's gonna require outside adjudication by someone like Vitalik or someone at the Ethereum Foundation. By contrast, under proof of work, you have this real neutrality, where if you have a network partition, you have a split and you have these two separate chains, it's the blockchain with the most embedded work the longest chain that is the correct chain. The Bitcoin network is has these self-healing properties, which you can read about in this video, and also linked to this video where I talk about the specter of of centralization and how it's so dangerous for proof of proof of stake coins like Ethereum. So don't be fooled by the propaganda. Don't be mouthing things like uh, Ethereum is going to use a lot less energy. Don't say dumb things like that. Also, please don't say I'm making these videos because I'm somehow scared of Ethereum or that Ethereum is going to flip Bitcoin. These are absurd statements. And even if Ethereum were to trade at a higher market cap than Bitcoin for a short period of time, this would mean absolutely nothing. Bitcoin is hard money. It's sound money. It's neutral money. Ethereum is software run by a centralized group of people. And under proof of stake, this is going to get much, much worse. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.